Hello, Victory Alley. My name's Craig Marion. I'm very proud to be here. If I could ask you to take off your hats, let's face the flag out there over the water and uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great pleasure to introduce uh, Chris Hagar, who's going to introduce the man you really want to see. Thank you very much. Welcome. It is not often you get to do an honor, but I want to set the honor in the stage that means a lot to me for this governor, for this candidate. I'm a Gold Star dad. My son was killed in Iraq in 07. Six days before he was killed, he called and said, Dad, I just wanted to tell you I love you. The men and women who have served our country did so and do so, not because of something they hate or someone, but because of who they love. My son loved his God, his family, his country, and freedom. This governor served with such distinction and in his job, he saved American lives. He lives by that same code. He loves his God. He loves his family. He loves his country. And he loves freedom. And it is someone like that that is so vital to being commander in chief. It is a great honor and a privilege that I can introduce Governor Ron DeSantis. Bring it up. Florida. Do you wish the rest of the country was run like we run it here? Well, we kind of got to do something about it because we can't have everybody seeking freedom moving to our state. We need the whole United States to be a free country again. So uh, we're, we're excited to be here. We're going to be uh, heading up to Milwaukee tomorrow. We got uh, the first debate in this whole uh, shebang we're going to be able to do, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, but at the end of the day, you all know up in Northwest Florida, being a military community, you know me being a veteran, uh, we have a mission uh, that we are uh, on. And it's very simple. We are sending Joe Biden back to his basement and reversing the decline of our country. Now, do you see, so we have a situation where uh, middle-class families have their grocery bills. Some of them have doubled in the last couple years. It's hard to afford a home. Uh, interest rates are uh, gonna be 8% perhaps pretty soon for that. Cars, more expensive than they've ever been. And yet, Hunter Biden rakes in hundreds of thousands of dollars for finger paints. Are you kidding me? You know, you, Madison, me, some of you couldn't see her because of this, but Six years old, her paintings are better than Hunter's paintings. I can guarantee you that. You know, we know a lot about uh, disasters, um, natural disasters and responding here in Florida. So a lot of us, and I'm sure you all have been sending uh, prayers and thoughts to what's happened in Maui. It's really sad uh, to see that. We've sent support, we'll send more if we need to. But, you know, I just, a thought experiment, if, we had a Republican president who, in the midst of these fires and their aftermath, 
decided not to go engage to help the victims, but to go sit on the beach, what would the media say if they tried to do that? They would, be, they would be screaming bloody murder. And yet, what do they say about old Joe just sitting out there? They don't say anything. They protect him. That's what they're trying to do. And so here's what we've got to make sure about in uh, 2024. I am not going to let him sit in his basement and get away with it again. We are going to run him ragged around this country. We are going to hold him accountable for his failures. We're going to show the American people that there's a better way. And we know that there's a better way. One of the first things we'll do, uh, first of all, it's great. You know, I, Florida's got a lot of reach. I go around the country now. People will say stuff about Florida. But you all know better than anyone. When I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm not just saying it. I'm not just sloganeering. I'm not just saying it because you'll vote for me. If I tell you I'm doing it, I'm going to do it. And so you can, you can write that down. So when we get in in January of 2025, uh, we are going to reverse Bidenomics on day one. We're going to take all of his executive orders, all of his regulations, we're going to grab them and we're going to throw them in the trash can where they belong. We are also going to hold accountable the people that have helped put us in this mess, those are people in Congress, Federal Reserve, throughout the federal government. They borrowed and printed and spent trillions and trillions of dollars starting in March of 2020 with COVID. Uh, their policies hurt this country. Their policies devalued our currency. It's made things more expensive. Uh, and we are not going to let a bunch of rich men north of Richmond spend us into oblivion any longer, we're going to hold them accountable. And we're going to stand up for the people of this country. I'm sick of seeing eight, uh, five of the eight wealthiest counties in the United States are suburbs of Washington, D.C. They spend, they borrow, you pay, and they benefit. And that is wrong. And that ends on January 20th, 2025. And it's not just Democrats. Republicans have spent and done it, too. We're going to go after the lot of them. We're going to go after both of them. Uh, we're also going to stop Biden's war on American energy production. We're opening up all of our energy resources. I want your gas prices to go down. I want people to save money, businesses. I want more jobs. And I want more national security that comes with being energy independent. So we will get that done on day one. You know, there's a lot of stuff that people have talked about for a long time. You know, there's a lot of stuff people used to talk about in Florida before I came along and did it. Um, one of the things nationally that people have been talking about, and I'll pledge to you to be the president to finally get it done, is bringing the issue of the southern border to a conclusion. We're going to get it done. We're not just going to sloganeer about it. We're going to do day one, declare a national emergency. We're mobilizing all available resources, including our US military, to stop the invasion. To BS, we're going to build a border wall. But we're probably more important than that. I'm going to be the first president that's willing to lean in against the Mexican drug cartels. We have tens of thousands of people that are dying because of the poison, the fentanyl that they are bringing into our country. I've met a number of these angel moms here in Florida, throughout the rest of the country. I met one in Texas. Her son, young guy, took one Percocet it happened to be laced with fentanyl, and he died. And that's happening all across this country. People are taking things. They're not even trying to take fentanyl. It gets in it, and it's fatal. And it's wrong that Biden is not lifting a finger to stop this. So when I get in, we are going to make sure to use lethal force against the Mexican drug cartels. When they try, if they try, to bring the fentanyl across the southern border when I am president, we are going to shoot them stone cold dead.
We are also going to usher in a reckoning to our agencies like the CDC, the FDA, and the NIH for their disastrous COVID-19 lockdown and mandate policies. You guys didn't have to experience that, but a lot of people's lives were destroyed because of it. We had kids locked out of school for a year and a half in parts of this country. We have businesses that were wiped off the face of the earth as a result of those policies. They forced people in other states to take an mRNA COVID shot against their will at the expense of losing their job. And yet nobody has been held accountable for this. I think what you got to do is you need to bring accountability from Fauci on down. Uh, we need justice. And when I'm president, you will never see me turning over my office to Dr. Fauci. You don't protect Fauci. You don't coddle Fauci. You bring somebody like Fauci in, you sit him down, and you say, Anthony, you are fired. So we're going to bring a reckoning to all these agencies because we can never let this happen to our country ever again. And unless you elect me, it is going to happen to our country again. I'm the only guy that's going to be willing to stop it, and we will stop it. And they're already talking about, you know, COVID waves coming, boosters, all this other stuff. Trust me, whatever you let them get away with, they are going to get away with. And so with me, we can know this will never happen again. Stick a fork in it, it's done. You know, one of the reasons why we've been leading in net in migration, well, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, no income tax. Uh, you know, even though we have no income tax, we run these big budget surpluses. Uh, we've actually, since I've been governor, we've paid down almost 25% of Florida's total debt. For the entire history of the state, we've paid down almost 25%. So people like that, they don't want to be taxed. They also, during COVID, they wanted to be in a free state. And I'll talk to people who moved here, even visited here. It was cathartic for a lot of people to get out of those jurisdictions. So that's true. But one of the main reasons people have moved here from some of these other states, public safety. We back the blue in this state. We support law enforcement. We don't let the inmates run the asylum. We hold criminals accountable for their misconduct. And when we've had, because you look around the country, they have some of these prosecutors in San Francisco, Chicago, Philadelphia, LA, they get elected and they say they're not going to enforce laws they disagree with. So they think it's wrong to go after somebody who mugs you on the street or even breaks into your house. And so what ends up happening is the criminals start to rule the roost and people aren't safe anymore, and they start fleeing the cities. Well, we've had two of those types of prosecutors in Florida say they were not going to enforce laws that they don't like. I removed both of them from their posts. So we are not going to let these prosecutors get away with this in our country. You can't be a successful country if every urban area is a total hellhole. So we're going to crack down federally. We're going to make sure they're enforcing the laws and upholding the civil rights of their citizens. And we will never, ever let people like BLM burn down cities in this country ever again. Yeah. You know, another reason people have wanted to come here is because they like the fact that we don't indulge in a lot of the nonsense that you see out there in society. You know, we know in Florida, men can't get pregnant, and it's just that simple. We're not going to pretend otherwise. We're not going to teach our kids to memorize 37 different pronouns in school. It's just not happening. And, you know, some people say, oh, you know, they don't worry about woke. You don't got to fight the woke. Look, it's important to have society based in truth and based in fact. And that's why we've rejected things like woke ideology, but it's also more important than that. When you have a woke agenda uh, infect things like our economy through things like ESG, which is environment, social governance, but basically they've created this justification to use corporations and businesses to advance a left-wing agenda on society. But that's an agenda that you never get to vote on 
They're just colluding and imposing it. So when that happens, the average person ends up poorer as a result. It will affect your lives. We've kneecapped it in the state of Florida, so it ain't happening here, but it is happening around the country, and we're gonna put a stop to that. When woke agenda infects schools, you end up getting indoctrination of the students, and they end up dumber as a result of that. We don't allow the indoctrination in Florida. We fought back. We're gonna make sure that's true the rest of the country. And when you do let woke overtake things like criminal justice, that's why you have some of these policies in places like Philly that let the inmates run the roost and average people end up less safe as a result. So we in Florida have been proud to say we're the state where woke goes to die. As president, we're gonna be sure to leave woke ideology in the dustbin of history once and for all. You know, I um, appreciate being in this part of Florida because you've got a lot of veterans, a lot of active duty military families, and we thank everybody for their service. And, you know, I think about when I served, and, uh, you know, I volunteered to serve in Iraq, man, 15, to almost 15 years ago, maybe more than that. And, uh, you know, I was an officer with, with Navy. They sent me, I was attached to Navy SEALs in Fallujah and Ramadi, and we. Uh, where there wasn't exactly the four seasons at that time in the war. It was uh, you know, not a great place to be. I definitely wouldn't want to go back. Uh, but, you know, when you're there, uh, you put everything else aside. It's not about you. Uh, it's not about where you're from, your ethnicity, any of that. Uh, it's not about any other agenda. It's about focusing on the mission at hand. And you band together and you do it because people's lives are at stake if you don't. And so when you're part of an effort like that, you know, there's a sense of pride that people have. You're wearing the uniform, wearing the flag. And I know a lot of veterans feel that way. And yet, I got a lot of veterans come up to me now, and they say they wouldn't want their kids or grandkids to serve in our military, given all the nonsense that's going on. And you, sure enough, the recruiting is at the lowest level since after the Vietnam War, when they got rid of the military draft. And I think the reason that is happening is people see that the military has lost focus. They're indulging social experimentation. They're indulging political agenda. I talk to people on, on active duty now and they talk about the training they're doing for pronouns. How does pronouns help you win a war against China? It doesn't. So as commander in chief, we're gonna do something about it. On day one, we are gonna take all the woke, all the social stuff, all the political, and we are gonna rip it out of the military and we're gonna return it to mission first. And you're gonna see recruiting do a lot better as a result of that. People wanna be a part of something that they know uh, is meaningful and focus on the eyes of the prize. The other thing we're gonna do, and we've done a lot of this in Florida with taking action in various ways, but you know, we have a federal government that's totally out of control. It is not the way the Founding Fathers intended it to operate. You have a massive fourth branch of government, an administrative state uh, that looms over us and imposes its will on us without our consent. Uh, so we're gonna get about the business of returning this government to its rightful owners, which is we, the American people. And that'll start on day one. And if you look at things like weaponization of agencies, whether it's the FBI, the DOJ, uh, or the IRS, the Founding Fathers would have predicted this. They understood if you allowed power to accumulate and there was no accountability, human nature being what it is, they will abuse their power. And that's what you're seeing in issues large and in issues small, in issues that the media follows and in issues that they don't. But this weaponization is the threat to everyday Americans. The FBI has done memos saying that traditional Catholics are potential terrorists. They have sent FBI agents to surveil moms going to school board meetings in Northern Virginia. They have worked with, uh, they sent a fleet of agents to raid Mark Houck, a pro-life activist, which was unnecessary. And they've even colluded with big tech to censor lawful political speech. When I become president, there's gonna be a new sheriff in town. There's gonna be accountability. You're gonna have a new director of the FBI on day one. He should have been fired a long time ago. 
you're going to see cleaning house at the Justice Department. And if we have people in these agencies that target Catholics, that go after parents, that collude with big tech, I am going to fire those people on the spot. So we are going to end the weaponization once and for all. For far too long, this government's been imposing its will on us. Now it's time that we impose our will on it. Now, all this is fine and dandy, and there's a lot more that, that we're going to want to do. Uh, but here's the deal. None of it matters if you don't win, and none of it matters if you don't have the ability to actually bring all this stuff in for a landing. And I can tell you here in Florida, you all know in this part of the state, the elections here before I came along were nail biters. You would wait to the panhandle to come in, and the question would be, is that enough to put the Republican over the top? because the Democrats have such big margins in Miami and Palm Beach and all those other places. And look, a lot of times Northwest Florida came through, uh, but they were close elections. And my first election was close. But you know what we did? We went about the business of leading. We led with purpose, we led with boldness, and we delivered results for the people of this state. The result of all of that was election of 2022 we had this thing won when Miami-Dade came in. I didn't even need. We didn't have a deficit in Miami-Dade and Palm Beach. We won both of them for the first time in decades. Yeah, we did, we did pretty good up here, too, which was a lot of fun. But we were able to win you know, by almost 20 points, winning independence by almost 18 points. And what that shows you is if we are doing what we need to do, uh, if we are delivering results for people, we will get people that have never voted Republican to vote for us. That's what we did in Florida, and that's how you win big. So that's what we need to do nationally. It hasn't been working for Republicans in most parts of this country lately. We've been losing a lot of winnable races because we're not attracting people beyond some of our own uh, party members, and that's not good enough. You need independence. Look, I think we're gonna be able to win some Democrats with given how Biden's doing and how bad everything is, we're gonna be able to get it done, but you gotta be able to track that. So we will do it. And here's the thing, uh, I'm not gonna give Biden any rest. Uh, we are gonna run all around this country. Uh, we are not gonna stop. We are gonna show energy, we're gonna show vigor, and we're gonna show a great contrast to the American people between somebody that should not be in office anymore versus somebody that's gonna spit nails on day one and get, jo get the job done for you. The other thing is, is okay, you gotta win, and we haven't done that very well outside of Florida and a couple other states. You gotta win. I think we can win big, but then you actually gotta follow through on what you said you're gonna do. And I can tell you of every, you know, people that run for office, what they do, and that's Republicans and Democrats, they overpromise and they underdeliver. And that's been true for my entire life, and I would challenge you to show me anybody uh, with our present company excluded, who can show otherwise. What we did in Florida, we made bold commitments. Every commitment we made, we delivered on. In fact, we not only honored our promises, we over-delivered on our promises. Isn't that what you should expect from people who you put in office? So we're gonna get that done, and that means on day one. And how do you know? because we've done it here in the state of Florida. If you look at what we've been able to accomplish, these are things that Republicans have been asking for for years and years and years. I mentioned we paid down almost 25% of our debt. We did almost 2.8 billion in tax relief, you guys. Our Freedom Summer holiday is still going on. Sports equipment, events, all that stuff. You guys got it. Families with young kids. We made all baby items permanently tax-free so you can raise kids and make ends meet. We've done a lot. We did the toll relief. We did the re rebate in the tolls. Some of you paid the tolls going over the bridge. So we did all that we could do to help people cope with Biden inflation, and we're proud of that. We also ban sanctuary cities in this state. We're cracking down on, on human trafficking and them smuggling illegals from the southern border into the state of Florida. And we even were able to provide a lift to some illegal aliens to beautiful Martha's Vineyard. 
You know, the elites, they want to impose their policies on you and on me, and they want to have open borders until they have to deal with the consequences of open borders. Now, none of them want to deal with it. So we did that. Uh, we also did a parent's bill of rights to make sure that parents are in charge of their kids' education. We just enacted universal school choice so you guys can send your kid to the school of your choice. And we made sure our school system is about educating our kids, not indoctrinating our kids. We got rid of critical race theory. We got rid of gender ideology. And we even had to stare down Disney to do it. But you know what? When our kids are at stake, as the father of a 6'5 and a 3-year-old, I don't care how big of a corporation you are. I don't care how powerful you are in this state. I am standing for our kids, and I will not back down from that. Thank you. Love you, too. We also recognize that this country faces threats, and while we're just one state, uh, we're going to do what we need to do to protect the people of this state. So we have signed legislation banning the purchase of land by the Chinese Communist Party and its affiliates in this state. We also eliminated Confucius Institutes, which the CCP puts in colleges and universities to spew propaganda uh, not here in the state of Florida. Uh, they have been given the eject button, and we're proud of, ha of having done that. We've also stood up for women's sports, and we have protected women's sports. We're not going to be jamming men into women's competitions. Our girls have the right to compete. You know, my six-year-old, she uh, may want to compete. She's very good, but she doesn't always like to play. My three-year-old, who was having a little bit of a fit, she didn't come out here. She's very good at t-ball and all these other things. And look, I don't know. They're going to do what they want to do. But if they want to do it, they should be able to compete with fairness and integrity. Uh, and it's wrong to have somebody swim on a men's swim team for three years, then switch to the women's team, and they say it's the women's national championship. Give me a break. That is a fraud. And it's sad that we've had to do this, but we did. Uh, the state of Florida has now prohibited transgender surgeries on minor children. No mutilation of minors in the state of Florida. It is wrong, and we are not going to allow it to happen. We are also ensuring that our higher education system is serving your interests as Florida taxpayers. These colleges and universities should not be indoctrination centers. They should be about lifting up our students, about teaching them how to think, and preparing them to be citizens of our republic. So we are now the first state in America to eliminate so-called DEI programs from our colleges and university systems. We're not going to divvy people up. We're going to treat everybody as individuals, and merit is what is going to matter uh, for us when we're doing it. So we're proud of being it. And of course, Florida, you know, when you elect somebody, there's going to be things that come down the pike that nobody's necessarily thinking about. Uh, when I got elected in 2018, we obviously dodged a major bullet from what was going to happen had I not won that election given my opponent this state would have ended up turning into California very quickly. Some of you probably would have moved away from here uh, if that would have happened, but it didn't. So we got to end it. But COVID-19 hits, and this is probably the biggest crisis that a governors, governors have faced in our entire lifetime, and it's probably the biggest crisis that our country has faced uh, since the September 11th, uh, 2001 terrorist attacks. And the people that were in executive positions had to make judgments about how they were going to handle it. And I didn't know very much about pandemics, like just wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, but I was going to be damned if I just let Anthony Fauci run this state. Uh, I owed you for electing me my best efforts to learn about what was going on, to read data, to make sure that what they were shoving down our throats from Washington was actually 
good policy or not. And I pretty much uh, early on figured out that they were getting it wrong up in D.C. and that Florida would chart its own course. Now, that was not an easy thing to do at the time because it was major hysteria. Uh, they were attacking me. People were saying that I'm making a big mistake, that I'm not going to have a, a, an ability to be uh, politically viable, all this other stuff. But, you know, a leader has got to dig in when it's tough and care more about protecting your jobs than he does about his own political hide. And so we took the incoming. That's fine. But we held our ground. We made sure the kids could be in school. We saved tens of thousands of businesses and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of jobs. And the result of all of that is the state has never done better as a result. So leadership is important. Uh, leadership is something that you need. You either have it or you don't. And you got to be willing to, uh, to withstand a lot of incoming, a lot of unfair attacks. But if it was easy to be a leader and to do the right thing, everybody would do it. And so we're proud that we planted our flag here, uh, that we kept this state free, uh, and we would do it all over again and take twice as much of abuse if we needed to do it. So you can count on me. You can count on me when we go up to Washington, because here's the deal. Nobody in Washington is going to want to see us succeed. They don't want to see the bureaucracy cleared out. They don't want to see Bidenomics reversed. They don't want to see uh, our energy production opened up. They don't want to see the military revitalized. They don't want to see any of this. So they are going to fight us tooth and nail. The bureaucrats, the Democrats, the left, the media, they're all going to do it. And so you got to be willing to stand your ground. You got to be willing to be focused. Uh, you got to be willing to be disciplined. We don't have time to get distracted. Uh, we've got to get the job done. So on day one, we will get the job done. And I was very active. I remember when I first became governor here in the state of Florida, and it was, uh, it was uh, a lot of activity. But I tell you this, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, we are going to be on a blizzard of activity to reverse the decline of this country. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We've got a lot, lot cut out for us. Uh, but I s had my, my kids here. I know many of you have kids and grandkids. We are in danger of being the first generation to turn over to the next generation a country that is less free and less prosperous than the one we inherited. And that is just unacceptable to me. I know it's unacceptable to you. And we're not, we have an obligation not to just sit back and let that happen. But I also think we owe an obligation for all the people who have worked hard uh, to give us an opportunity uh, to be free. And people have sacrificed through many generations uh, when freedom was under attack. Our founding fathers knew, because Benjamin Franklin, when he walked out of the Constitutional Convention, he was asked, did you give us a republic or a monarchy? He said, a republic if you can keep it. They knew that each generation would be called upon to defend freedom and defend liberty. And so I'm motivated because uh, I appreciate what these generations have done. I used to fly up to Washington, D.C., and there was one particular route you could take going into Reagan Airport that took you flush parallel to the National Mall. And if you looked out the left side of the plane, you saw very up-close, beautiful views of the Lincoln Memorial, the reflecting pool, the Washington Monument, then perched up on the hill, the beautiful, majestic U.S. Capitol building. And you feel a sense of pride as an American, because those symbolize uh, what our country stands for and the ideals that have made this country great. But what I figured out after doing that trip a few times is the best monuments our country has were not out the left side of the plane. Because if you looked out the right side of the plane, you looked over the Potomac River, you saw a series of small, nondescript monuments orderly arranged over the rolling hills of a place called Arlington National Cemetery. And it occurred to me then, and I believe now, you can have the best constitution in the world. You can have the best declaration of independence in the world. These things do not run on autopilot. Uh, they require people uh, in certain times to risk their lives and indeed give the last full measure of devotion and service to this country. Now, we're not called upon to make sacrifices at that level, uh, but we are called upon to defend freedom when it's under attack. So 2024 is our moment of choosing. We are not going to get a mulligan on this one. 
The Democrats are playing for keeps. The time for excuses for Republicans is over. We must get the job done. I will get the job done. And I promise you, as your president, I will not let you down. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much.